singing there was Françoise Hardy, who sang for uh, Monaco, I think, and uh, Nana Muscuri, who was singing for Luxembourg. I was in France singing and all of a sudden they spoke to me about the Eurovision. There was no television in, the, in those days in Greece. So they used me for, for, for Luxembourg and, um, and uh, I came for the first time just to sing this, this, uh, the Eurovision. Nana Mascori didn't win Eurovision that year, but her appearance was a hit with UK audiences. In a bold move, the BBC gave this young Greek singer her own television series. It ran until the early 1980s. This is the way it started, and singing also a few Greek songs, but to translate a little bit what the song was about. And uh, we never thought, that, I mean, I never thought that it, it, it would be uh, interesting. And then we've been for many, many years. The series it was opening a very beautiful area from Greece, uh, the monuments or treasures that we have. So the people wanted to learn about the music and the music also make them know about your country. When it started in 1968, Nana Muscuri's series was a big draw on the new highbrow channel, BBC Two. It was a pioneering world music show with European folk, pop, even jazz. Nice. Millions of people were watching the television. There were only three channels. You know, it was hugely powerful. So if you got on one of the music-based shows, people would buy your records. I think, I think the, the success of someone like Nana Muscuri was possibly her televisual presence. Obviously, she's beautiful in that kind of harmless, you wouldn't be offended if your wife liked her and your wife wouldn't be offended if your husband liked her. You know, she's not this sort of, you know, sexual um, dynamo, or doesn't look like one anyway. He must have had this whole generation. He must have looked at Pop and thought, oh "God, it's awful. Look at his, his haircut. He's wearing a dirty jacket." Then all of a sudden, you get Nana Muscuri in a lovely little dress, with a combed hair, and a clean glasses, and a lovely way, singing a very sweet song. So it is. It's an escape, isn't it? It's a slightly Blackpool Pleasure Beach Walt Disney version of the cultures of the world. You know, reduced to a series of national dresses and funny instruments. In some ways, it's quite liberating. Certainly, the first time I heard any international pop was sitting with my nan on a Saturday night watching Nana Muscuria. Yeah. 